And coming to you live from Antones in Austin, Texas, for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Get up for Tony. It's clear. Come on, Austin, Texas. We're live. Make some fucking noise, everybody. It's a real live show. This is what makes this podcast different. Is you guys are here, and look, Brian Redband. Hey, here, everybody. everybody. What's up? <laughs> How exciting. <laughs> What a great church-going uh, start of the yeah. show that we have. Some empty tables here. What is happening? I think the ticket scalpers are getting the best yeah. of Kill Tony the nowadays. Scalper shit we just learned about. Yeah, we have to figure this out. But if fun. you're listening to this, do not buy your tickets on scalpers. Just don't do it yeah. because you're going to help them out, and then they're going to do this shit every week. And also, why not uh, Why not swing by if you're bored on a Monday and see if tickets are available at the door? Because 10, 15 minutes after the show starts, we're going to start seating these tables with human beings anyway. But for those of you that are here that bought your tickets legally, how about you make Make some noise, everybody. We're here. It's a Monday night. No one has more fun than us. Very, very, very exciting stuff happening. We have the great Ryan J.E. Belt all the way in Los Angeles, California, drawing tonight's episode. All prints are available at RyanJEBelt.com, including the new Kill Tony the Coloring Book and other fun stuff on the way. Big stuff coming there at RyanJEBelt.com. If you've ever been to a road episode or anything like that, the posters from that show are still available there. We also have a local artist, Chris Rogers, right behind us drawing something. He draws every week live in front of the live audience. We're all stuffed up on food thanks to our friend Yoni over at Best Barbecue Show, CM Smokehouse of Bolden Acres. I swear to God, people, this is not just like a a sponsor that uh, that we just talk about because of uh, they uh, give us food or money or anything. We're literally massive fans. The raving reviews of people that we have here every single week that eat this food is amazing. Literally, and, in the, and you know I would never say this if it's not true, one of the best Philly cheesesteaks I've ever had in my life. A brisket patty melt. They have the Crunch Wrap Supreme. If you like the Taco Bell Crunch yeah. Wrap Supreme, they have their version of it, and it blows your my you mind. You guys have to so. check it out. It's called CM Smokehouse of Bolden Acres. Make a Monday routine out of it. Go to CM Smokehouse of Bolden Acres before the show. Come see Kill Tony. Go to the Red Rose, Yellow Rose afterwards. It's the whole Kill Tony super packet. Uh, how about a hand for the band, everybody? They're here. John Dees is out this week. This is the official Fix Vodka Kill Tony band brought to you by Fix Vodka. Alkaline Vodka. John Dees is out this week, and look who fucking stepped up. The great D Madness out front tonight. Have some fun with my boy D. Madness, Lorenzo Jackson. I've got a hand for on electric guitar. Matt Muling is here, everybody. He has a collection of Mario figurines that he gets at HEB. Who loves HEB here, huh? Where are my HEB people? We love HEB here at Kill Tony. And I've got a big hand coming off of one of the, not one of, coming off of the biggest Mexican drum off in the history of the show. Drummer Michael Gonzalez, ladies and gentlemen. All local Austin talent. This place is filled with great musicians. And uh, we're super, super excited about tonight's show. We have a fun one for you. But before we start tonight's show, here's a little bit about the amazing sponsors that made tonight's episode available for you here right now. Hey, y'all. Are you hiring for spring? What type of role are you hiring for? Maybe you need to hire someone to wear many hats, which can be challenging. Or you might have a simple position to fill, but it's taking forever to find someone who's a great fit for your company. That's where ZipRecruiter comes in. ZipRecruiter can help you find qualified candidates fast. And now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Kill Tony. Whether you need to hire a civil engineer in New York, a nurse in Nebraska, an attorney in Colorado, or a mascot in Missouri... ZipRecruiter's matching technology finds people with the right experience for your job and actively invites them to apply. It's so effective that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. From account
accountant to zoologist and everything in between, ZipRecruiter makes hiring easier. And right now, you can try it for free at our only our listeners get it link, ZipRecruiter.com slash kill Tony. If you go to ZipRecruiter.com slash kill Tony today to try ZipRecruiter for free, we get credit for sending you. Once again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash K-I-L-L-T-O-N-Y. You know ZipRecruiter is the smartest way to hire. Squeaky doors, clogged sinks, finicky engines. When things break around the house, you take care of it. However, when something's off in the bedroom, you just try to not think about it. Come on, man. What are you waiting for? Take care of it. Go to GetRoman.com slash Tony now. With Roman, you can get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for ED, all from the comfort and privacy of your own home. A U.S. licensed healthcare professional will work with you to find the best treatment plan. If medication is appropriate, it ships to you free with two-day shipping. The whole process is straightforward and discreet. Getting started is simple. Just go to GetRoman.com slash Tony and complete an online visit. Take care of your ED without leaving your home. Complete an online visit to Day to connect with a healthcare professional and take care of it. Red Band said it. Go to GetRoman.com slash Tony now and you'll get $15 off your first month. It's really time to take care of your ED. And remember, get started today and you'll save $15 on your first order of ED treatment. Use the code Tony to help with your bony. <laughs> and we're back. Are you guys ready to start tonight's show? Live from Antone's in Austin, Texas. Every single one of these episodes, we always have one or two of my favorite human beings, some of the best comedians in the world, and this is a big one. For those of you that are real comedy fans, you're about to lose your fucking minds because this guy, an absolute legend at the comedy store, closed the main room under Mitzi Shore's tutelage for decades, everybody. This is a guy that all of your favorite comedians hustle into the room to go watch. This is the guy that your favorite comedians watch late at night he's an insane man comedy store legend kill tony legend make some fucking noise for the great and powerful brian holtzman everybody oh shit oh this is one of those off the rails episodes our man the wild goat brian holtzman is here ladies and gentlemen brian how are you this evening you're damn right. <laughs> You're damn right. <laughs> We're gonna have so much fun. Uh, let's get this party started, shall we? Is there anything I'm missing? I don't think so. You guys know how the show works. We have a record here tonight. By the way, make some noise. It's a record for signups here tonight. We hit over 85 signups for the show. People are up on the second floor watching a screen, a giant screen, watching the stream of the show that you're in the room watching, hoping that I pull one of their names out of this here bucket. If I pull their name, they get 60 seconds uninterrupted. You know your time is up when you hear the sound of a kitten. That means wrap it up or else you're going to bring out the angry warehouse district bear. There it is. That's the bear. And there's a sheep and a bird for good measure. (laughs) Holtzman gets excited when he hears the animals. You guys ready to start this show? Anything can happen. It could be a local legend that I pull out of the bucket. It could be one of you. Perhaps you signed up for your first time ever doing stand-up comedy here tonight. You guys sure you're ready to start the show? Come on. This is Austin, Texas, home of the blues. Are you guys ready for a crazy Monday? There you go. Okay, good enough. That's a six out of ten. Yeah, it's okay. It's all right. Definitely Monday energies here tonight. We have some tables, some some tables, some older people are here to make some noise for the older people, everybody. Freshly vaccinated. <laughs> and don't forget to shut your fucking phones off. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And here we go. The show starts now. 60 seconds uninterrupted going to a man named Paul Cyphers. Paul Cyphers is going to start tonight's show. Very, very exciting stuff. Paul Cyphers is coming to the stage from one of these areas. Paul Cyphers. Here we go. Here he comes. That flash means Paul Cyphers. Here he is, everybody. Make some noise for your first comedian tonight, Paul Cyphers. 
Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Uh, I had a really rough weekend. Uh, I got hit by the same drunk driver two times this weekend. <laughs> I was sitting in the passenger seat. My dad punched me in both my eyes. <laughs> so that's what happens when you mess with the radio. I used to be in a band. We had to break up. Uh, my drummer wanted to go for more of an indie rock vibe, and I wanted him to stop having sex with my girlfriend. So it's creative differences, really. Um, I'm a vegan, but please hold your applause. On top of being a vegan, my day job, not a joke, I'm an exterminator. I'm a vegan exterminator. First off, vegan exterminator sounds like a username on an alt-right subreddit, I'm gonna be honest. Vegan exterminator, that's like being an Amish guy that works at Best Buy. Hi, I'm Jebediah, I'll be helping you here at Geek Squad today. The problem with your phone is uh, there's a lot of dirt in the charging port, and it's the devil, so it's gonna ruin your family. There you go, looking for the cat. There he is, and he's spot on. Paul Cyphers, everybody. Hell yeah. Paul, welcome to the show. This is your Thank first you. time on, right? Yes, yes. Absolutely. You look like a healthy Lena Dunham. Hell yeah. Lena well, Dunkums. I love it. Welcome, Paul. How long have you been doing stand-up comedy? Uh, about three years. Three years? All of it here in Austin? No, I just moved here at uh, the beginning of April. This is your first time on? I swear to God, I've seen you before here. Uh, I look like a lot of people from uh, Austin, uh, so... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah. Uh, where'd you move from? Uh, Massachusetts. Worcester, Massachusetts. Wow, Worcester. We just had someone else from He's my Worcester roommate. here last week. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. You guys are both made the... You made the drive from Worcester? Yep, we actually drove down like in a convoy together, yeah. Okay. Just the two of you? Uh, yep. And then uh, we have another roommate from Worcester who also, he just didn't drive down with us, but he also How lives here. How many men did you live with in Worcester? <laughs> two okay. other Worcester men. And you all made the move together? Yep. Look at that. Yeah. You seem very close with these guys. You ever do anything uh, wacky with them? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're a vegan. You don't believe in putting meat in those types of places, yeah. <laughs> do you? You have a girlfriend, Paul? Uh, no, no, I don't. No. no? When's the last time you uh, went on a date? Uh, yesterday. Really? Yeah. Oh my God! Tell us about it. How'd you find this girl? Uh, she's a comic, so I don't want to talk about it too much. Oh, <laughs> come on! It's okay. We have to. She trust me. She would throw you under the bus in a heartbeat if she was up here right now. <laughs> so, like, what? You guys were like doing an open mic or something like that, and uh, yeah, I found her. Like, she added me on Instagram when I was moving here, and uh, we just went out a few times. Last night being the last time, and uh, so I'm, I'm hoping. It would be a girlfriend situation, but oh. too too early to call, I guess. Oh, she's gonna love it when she's gonna get so wet when she hears this part of this podcast. <laughs> like, oh, Paul, you're hoping it's a girlfriend situation. <laughs> I love it. Did you land a kiss or anything last night? Anything crazy? Huh? Yeah, yeah, a little bit of heavy petting, making out. Heavy as petting? Say. What are we talking about? What is that? Heavy petting. What do you think that measures? Yeah. Out? Is that three fingers? That's no. That's the thumb. You're doing the hitchhiker oh. twirl. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Some yeah. heavy petting. Do you exterminate that pussy, dude? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <no. laughs> take it. Take it. Take it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Don't ask. Take it. What are you doing? So what is heavy petting exactly, Paul? What does that measure out to be? I don't know. Trying? Just a lot of like over the pants stuff when you're saying goodbye. Ooh, I guess. over oh. the pants. Yeah. Oh, oh shit, dude. <laughs> That's so when you grind and you have like that rash yeah. the next did you morning. Have, <laughs> did you have blue balls? Do you have a little upset belly after the hang? I mean, you take care of it afterwards, I guess. I know, so. but uh, answer my question. <laughs> Uh, I've never had blue balls. I You've never had blue balls? I've never felt anything from it. Really? Jesus. You might actually, have low testosterone. No, actually, I, I, I had my first blue ball when I was like 32 or something oh, like that. Okay. And I was like, oh, that's what they're talking about. And really? It hurt. Yeah, I never had it where oh, it hurt. Yeah, it hurts and everything. like a motherfucker. Yeah. I got them right now just looking at that beautiful <laughs> head of hair of yours. <laughs> Thank you. How do you... How do you... How do you handle split hairs? You know, what do they call it? Split ends? Uh, Very I'm, beautiful hair. Thank We're you. all going to fuck you after this show. <laughs> thank you. That's exciting. Not over the pants either, Paul. We're going under the pants when we fuck We're you. We're going to do the thumb thing. I love it. You seem like a really cool guy. What, uh, what else about you? What do you like to do for fun when you're not doing stand-up? 
Uh, I play a lot of video games. Ooh. Um, All right. How exciting. What, <laughs> what kind of video games are we talking about? Uh, I play a lot of computer. I play Counter-Strike a Ooh, lot. Ooh, okay. It's a popular game. All I guess. right. What else? What other than video games, Paul? Give us something a little bit more exciting than video games. Uh, I honestly, I just, I don't have a job. I just walk around for about three hours a day, and then I go to open mics, so... <laughs> Okay. I'm having a pretty boring existence lately. Why do you walk around? You, There's like trails behind my house. I just walk around, oh. listen to music. You listen to music? Yeah. What kind of music do you listen to? Uh, I listen to a lot of different stuff, a lot of like punk and hardcore. And stuff okay. Like that. You ever been in a band or anything like that? Yeah. Uh, like five years ago, before I did comedy. What was, was the name of the band? I was in a band called Rend. They're like... Uh, Ren? Ren. R-E-N-D. So it's French for like... Oh, Rend. Rend. Tearing apart. Yeah. Never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give us a little example? Sing us a little. Uh, you wanna, you come on, you, know, you absolutely positively have to. That's the catch with getting the, the catch with coming on the show and getting introduced to you know hundreds of thousands of the biggest stand-up comedy fans in the world is that you have to fucking bare your soul every once. How many of you think you should sing a line uh, from a, a punk song right now? It's yelling. This it's is yelling. the exchange it's not right now. It's this yelling. It's not okay. You, absolutely. Whatever the fuck. I know. I, I know. But you're really. You're really giving it away. Like, this is like a magician saying, it's going to be a pigeon that comes out of my sleeve. Like, you're supposed to surprise the audience with the yelling. You're not supposed to really tip it off like that. But I, now I get, now look at your body language. You're crossing your arms. Everything's shutting down. What kind of punk singer crosses his arms before? That's like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> there you go. Just make you feel at home a little bit. We're just warming you up. You want a punk? Here, get, Michael, give you a little punk beat. Give him you one guys, of those wacky can fucking... Can you guys play, like, Everlong or something? I know it's not punk, but... You think D-Madness knows what Everlong is? <laughs> That's what he calls his dick. Come on, give him a wacky fucking... Uh, give him some... Yeah. Fucking... Ladies and gentlemen, this is Paul Cyphers. Come on, sing it! Fucking yell, motherfucker. What the fuck is that, Boston? Do it again. I said, what the fuck is up, Austin? All right, stop, 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 stop. That's right. the, this is why I never got into fucking punk music. Yeah. I never got it. <laughs> you guys all act all tough, and then you're like, I don't know what to do. I don't even know. Why are you doing this to me? Teenage angst, man. You grow out of it, right? I'm telling you, dude. Give this fucking guy an AK-47 in a middle school. You know what I mean? That's what he... All right. Paul, fun times. Thanks for getting the party started for us. Great, great stuff. There he is. Paul Cyphers, everybody. Paul, wait, Paul, wait. Paul Paul Paul, 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 Paul. Come back. Jesus, Paul. My God, you're running away like you're fucking... Don't you know Holtzman always gives presents to the guests? Yeah, look at that. Ooh, you're getting two gifts. That's a pair of... That's a thong? Give that to your girl. You can slide that to the side. You're not gay if you wear it over your underwear. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's very cool. Women's panties and a microphone keychain. Gifts from Brian Holtzman. You know what? I got one more for you. Here's something really cool. Okay. This is a really cool thing. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. But who better to give this to than a vegan? Do you use leather products? Uh, no. Don't give it to him. You don't? I'll take it. I'll take it. No. Are you going to give are you going to give this to this no, little no. whore you've been sleeping no, with? No, no, I'll value it a lot. It's a leather joke book <laughs> handmade by Don't give it to uh, a fan, vegan. Adrian Cavazos. Yeah. I would love it. Are you going to keep it for yes. yourself? I swear to God. I promise you, Tony. If I, I see promise. you at a fucking, at a comedy club, I'm going to ask you to show I me this. I will have it on me at all times. And if you don't have it, I'm going to blacklist you okay, from I this promise. show forever. I promise you. All right. This is made by Adrian Cavazos. He's Boneseye on Instagram. I don't know if you guys can see that. It is an incredible handmade leather Kill Tony joke book. And there you go. That's for you. A bunch of gifts. All right. Let me have the panties back. You can't have two, you fucking... No, 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 okay. Holtzman takes the panties Wait, back. Wait, why do you have that, Holtzman? There he goes. Paul Cyphers, everybody. He's on Instagram at RealPaulCyphers. C-Y-P-H-E-R-S. Why did Holtzman have panties and the hangers still on it also? Because he bought them. Those are real... Hey, now! Hey, now! Holy cow! I got the blue balls now! <laughs> 
Maximilian Mantikoff is next. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from the Red Rose, how about a big hand for our friend Kaylee Funk? She's here. That reminds me, the Red Rose this Thursday, people, is celebrating their one-year anniversary featuring adult film stars Teal Conrad and Nina Ellie, sponsored by Fleshlight. Yeah, Kaylee Fleshlight. helps us keep the microphones clean between every comedian. All right. Here he is, your next comedian. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Maximilian Mantikoff, everybody. What's up, guys? I, uh, if you can't tell white people, I'm Hispanic. I grew up Hispanic. I have a little cousin. She's five years old, and uh, she's 5'5". Five five, and my aunt thinks if she plays basketball, she'll become a lesbian. So when my family thinks, which is kind of weird, because honestly speaking, if she ends up being 6'4", she's eating pussy regardless. Just saying. Give her a chance. She might make it to the WNBA. Make $40,000 a year. Some of you don't like that, but all of you don't go to WNBA games. I've been running recently, so I think I know what ladies go through during sex now. 30, 30 seconds into it, I'm like, man, I don't want to do this. 30 minutes later, I'm like, yo, that was good for me mentally. And if my legs are shaking, I'm getting ice cream. <laughs> Thank you. All right, getting out at 48 seconds, Maximilian Mantikoff. Welcome to the show. You've been on here before, right, Maximilian? Yeah, like two weeks ago, actually. I always remember a Maximilian. Yeah. Welcome back. What did we find out two weeks ago when you were on? Uh, I ran with the Bulls. Ah, that's we talk right. About that. In Spain, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. What do you think about Maximilian's performance, Brian Holtzman? I thought it was very, very constructive. I liked the way you weaved in and out of your racial racism and tried to put that <laughs> uh, to the side and your hatred for white people and your uh, your inability to uh, support L B G T E B N D E A. <laughs> absolutely, I couldn't. That's everything I was gonna say. You said it better than I could have said it, Maximilian. You were here a couple weeks ago. I remember now the running of the Bulls, the whole thing. What's something, did you, have you thought about your appearance on the show in the last two weeks, and did you think about anything else that you might want to share with us about your life or your, anything that you've done? Or uh, anything like I that? saw you, I think, last week talk about like the shooting, up at the mass shooting up north. Where, right? did you, where did you see me talk about that? Here? On no, the show? no, over at Vulcan. Okay. And, uh, that was that, fake news. That was fucking fake news. I was at the Target. Inside that same parking lot that got evacuated. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And they just send us outside. Like, There's an active shooter and they just told us to go outside. I was like, this doesn't seem safe. But. Oh, my goodness. Especially when you're at a place that literally has a target. A target it. over yeah, it, it's right? Incredible. Yeah. Absolutely. Were you scared? Were you, like, really scared? Yeah. There was a lady. She was on the phone and she was like, I'm with my daughter. There's an active shooter outside. And oh. it was terrifying because we had no idea what's going on. I'm looking at the Citizens app. And like I said, they're just shooting us outside. All the old people still carrying their carts. Did you Crazy. do any cool TikToks? I didn't. No, I should have, right? There you go. Good question. Any cool TikToks? The craziest part is that the shooter was actually the comedian that was on right before you. So uh, <laughs> very interesting stuff. Maximilian, uh, fun times. What ethnicity are you again? Uh, Argentinian. I'm Hispanic. Argentinian. Yeah. What, what's our, what are Argentinians known for? What, what, do you, what do you notice about your life? Like, I'm Italian, so I can always eat uh, pasta. They're like the Italians of South America. It's like everything's just Everyone bread. wants to be Italian. We know that. I mean, we knew you were going to A lot of your that. people came to us, dude. What the fuck are you talking about? Your people came to Argentina. You guys fucked up our culture, dude. What do you mean? What do we do? You bought a lot of bread and pasta, dude. All right, you know what? This is racist, and <laughs> I'm not into racial humor at all. We didn't, we didn't, we, we, we helped you guys. You guys didn't know how to make bread before the Italians did it. <laughs> and we thank you, thank you. That reminds me, I had some of the best pots in my life. Some of uh, some of my buddies are here from the great restaurant Chez Z. Oh everyone. fuck I yeah! Know you know about Chez Z? They're awesome. We just randomly stumbled into this place. We didn't even know what we were going into. Had an unbelievable lunch. Our friends uh, over at Shay Z. How does friends. Austin have this much food and we are just hearing about it, you know, since we've moved here? Minds, minds are just blown yeah, every single day. Sense. Today I had uh, ramen at Tatsuya for the first time ever. Oh my God. See, the catch with some of these things, like Tatsuya just fucked up edamame everywhere else for me. There's spicy edamame, literally 20 times better than any other fucking edamame I've ever had, and I eat it all the time. Where's the best barbecue spot? I haven't even had a barbecue since I've been here. CM Smokehouse at Bolden Acres. That's an easy one. We, we love CM Smokehouse. Buckeyes. 
There you go, 100%. Bucky's, you meant. What's your love life like, <laughs> Ma- Maximilian? What's, what's your love life like, Maximilian? You're uh, a good-looking Argentinian guy. What's, what's going on with you? I'm in a relationship. Yeah, I've been, in a, I've been in a relationship for about a year now, almost a year. Uh-huh. Yeah. What does she do? Uh, she's a doctor. She bends over and takes it like a woman should. <laughs> <laughs> she, what kind of doctor is she? Uh, family medicine. Family medicine. Wow. Yeah. She's like a real doctor. She makes doctor money. Uh, she just graduated literally. Are you a week pointing ago. a gun at me right now in your jacket? <laughs> just in case, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, wow. That's crazy. I thought it was a knife. <laughs> it's a little bomb there at the end. He has a grenade. He's flicking us off. That's what he's doing because of that Italian shit. So she's a real doctor, and you're yeah. out here just fucking gagootsing around. That's exactly what I'm doing now. And she supports your comedy career? She does, yeah. I actually met her at a comedy show a year ago. Oh, okay. Hell yeah. Laughter is the best medicine after all. All right, Maximilian. Well, you were just on a couple weeks ago, so we're going to hustle on to the next one. Another new minute from Maximilian Mantikoff, everybody. There he goes. Max Mantikoff on Instagram. Max with two X's. Wait, we got to see what the new gift is. Here comes the the gifts from Brian Holtzman. Oh, my God. Let's see what's happening. Whoa. What the fuck? Those are some underwear for a legit <laughs> doctor right there and another microphone keychain. <laughs> Those keychains are so cool. I think I figured out what That's Brian's spandex. Doing. That'll that'll give. That'll give and breathe. Dallin Garrett is next. Dallin Garrett, but not before the great Kaylee Funk switches out the microphone for a, a brand new uh, clean COVID friendly microphone. You can find Kaylee at the Red Rose. Not to be confused with the Yellow Rose, the Sister Club. Both are here in Austin. Those are the two most famous strip clubs in Austin. How many of you love strip clubs out there? Make some noise, huh? All right. Okay, so Dallin Garrett. I do believe this is a new name. Here comes Dallin, everybody. Make some noise for Dallin Garrett. Anything can happen. This is Kill Tony live from Antones in Austin, Texas. All right. Thank you guys for that pity applause, like last place at the Special Olympics. So the first joke is for you, Tony. Yeah, I know, right? (laughs) So I've been jerking off a lot lately, just out of sheer boredom, because that's how bad traffic is on Mopac. So I find dating can be weird sometimes for me. Uh, A lot of women, they treat me like I am a god to them. I know, right? It's because they only talk to me when they need something. So, yeah. (laughs) So there's a fascinating book (laughs) that I recommend. It's on the bestsellers list. Um, It's on the history of fake news. I recommend everybody check it out. Uh, It's called The Holy Bible. All right, so here we go. I'm going to try this real fast in honor of uh, Humpty from, uh, oh, nope, never mind. I'm not going to try it. There you go. (laughs) Dallin Garrett, everyone. Uh, A lot of people say, describe his comedy as slightly funnier than pancreatic cancer. Uh, Incredible. Incredible, incredible, Dallin. Welcome to the show. Thanks, man. Uh, I love it. First time doing stand-up? Uh. Six time. Six. Six time yeah. ever. How about a hand for him? He's getting started. <laughs> getting his footing underneath him. Dallin, uh, what was your last joke going to be? Let's see if maybe it was going to be the big redeemer here. Why don't you no, do that last wasn't. joke? No, it wasn't. It's a horrible joke. Try was, it. Uh, it's not it good. It couldn't have been that much worse than everything else you set up there. I mean, it really... <laughs> What's the difference? Just tell the fucking joke. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit. Dallin. It's horrible. It's not good. All right, Dallin, go. I don't All right, think you go. realize how bad the rest of the jokes were. I know. Like, it's know. really, it cannot be that much worse. I know. Try it, Dallin. Here we go. All right, here we go. This is a real story, by the way. All right, here we how go. How long is this? It's a uh, no, no, story? No, 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 here we go. I, too, have gotten busy in a Burger King bathroom. Uh, I had to take a shit. It was going to take a while. I was going to be there, so I wrapped up and finished up the email for work. Wow. <laughs> There you go. I only did it for uh, Digital Underground. I literally made up a joke just for that. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was going to be funny. Dallin, just take a breath for a second. Breathe. Are you breathing at all? Have you been holding your breath the whole time that you've been up here? This is very exciting. So, Dallin, let's talk about your life. You've only done this six times. You started recently, right? Mm -hmm. 
How long ago did you start? How many times have you squoze in six spots into? <sighs> I don't two really, weeks, two I don't months. Really want it to, I don't, I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. Nine years. Nine years. You, your first time performing was nine years ago. Yeah, I did it four times in Florida. Just kind of like a bucket list kind of thing. Uh-huh. It was fun. And uh, not to kiss ass, but I didn't want to get on stage again until this show. Okay. So, like, I, I really am being honest, guys. Like, this show is so much fun. It's amazing. I feel the anxiety when people come up. I hope they do good. Does it give you a hard on? <laughs> Wear, me a hard on. Wearing those pants, I think we would know if he had a hard on. I don't know what those things. It's like a giant fucking roll of toilet paper wrapped around you. Oh. Mummy pants over here. Mummy pants. Dallin, uh, how old are you? I'm 40. 40. Yeah. And you fought in the uh, military, am I correct? Uh, I joined the military, but no, I didn't fight. So what happened? So how did me. you join and not fight? They heard uh, your I jokes. Got injured. I got they injured. heard your jokes. They're like, we can't send this across the seas. Okay, then. This guy's Man. not even going to tour for the military, not to mention comedy. Man. What happened? How did you join and not serve? Just, I had an ankle injury from a basketball high school thing. And they basketball? Sent me back. Yeah. They oh, sent, my God. They sent me back in the middle of basic. I cannot picture you playing basketball at all whatsoever. I couldn't picture me doing it either, but I rolled my ankle while I was drunk one night. and it. I feel like out. D. Madness would beat you in <laughs> basketball. <laughs> he can't picture him at all. Deep madness out front tonight. I love it. Uh, Dallin, so let's talk about it. What else have you been doing your whole life? What do you do for a living? I definitely cannot tell you that. I will get fired. Really? Yeah. Can you give us a ballpark of what you do? Nope. Really? I'll tell you what I do on part-time for fun, though. Sure. So I'm a kayak guide. If you guys ever want to check out the uh, bats under the Congress Bridge. Uh, well, I'm a licensed scuba instructor, so uh, if I got some crazy stories. If you want to hear one of those. Wow, you Otherwise... were drowning on stage tonight, so it's incredible that you're a scuba instructor. It's incredible. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. How long you been doing that for? Uh, well over 10 years. What's it... the craziest thing you ever saw under the water? Me taking a shit. You took a shit underwater? While on scuba gear. Oh, my God. Wow, about you four, also took a shit on stage tonight. That's 40, incredible. Yeah. I could do this. <laughs> Everything you tell me you do, I'm going to say you did it on stage yeah. tonight. The car, re- but I really did. Yeah, like 40 feet under. Wow. And there was no avoiding it. And the so. coral reefs in Austin, I heard, are just amazing. Coral reefs. <laughs> coral reefs? Coral. Coral reefs. <laughs> I thought that was Christopher Reeves' brother or something you're talking about. Coral reefs. <laughs> Sorry, he's a fifty-one fifty. All right, oh, oh, I know his job. Oh. What's his job? Uh, you know, what? Are, Almost. You're a cop? No, 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 no. no. Oh, wait a second. Oh shit. Oh, you can't admit to being a cop. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm way too skinny to be a cop. Oh, oh. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Okay, way too less muscular be, to, to be a cop. Uh, That's not true way either. Way less brave. It's either, it's either cop or a fluffer on a porno shoot. <laughs> Dallin, what else, what else about you? What's your love life like? You seem like the kind of guy that's, uh, that's uh, had a couple ladies uh, tied to the bed while you go out and do stand-up and things like that, right? Uh, you know what? Never been married, no kids. Uh, the single life is pretty fun. Hell yeah, especially when you're a police officer. You get to just do whatever you want with the ladies. You pull them over. It is a federal offense to resist an officer, so in case y'all didn't know that. Oh, the fact that you know that joke proves that you're a cop. You just accidentally admitted to being a police officer on the show. Man. Busted. Uh-oh. All right, Dallin. Um... What else? I feel like there's something else. Let me ask you this, because you seem like a real man, right? You seem sort of like a tough guy a little bit, okay. right? What, is, what do you think is the coolest thing about you? The coolest thing about me... You seem like uh, a real stiff, so I'm asking. Man, that's so narcissistic. You know what? I mean, I don't know. I like to travel a lot. Uh, I play a lot of sports and things like that. I what try kind to be of active. sports? Uh, sand volleyball, softball, you name it. I mean, anything. I'll play sand anything. volleyball and softball. Do, do, do you exclusively only play women's sports? <laughs> you know, sand volleyball, softball, uh, pussy tag. <laughs> I don't know. Where do you bury the bodies? Tell us the it's truth. It's my understanding that here lately, guys can join women's sports, and that's bigotry for you to say that's 
like to make fun of that. That's, that's not true. Really Tony. That's, that's true. Saying that's true. Like I plan on dominating women's chess. Okay. Because I'm going to enter those chess tournaments as a male, okay. identifying as a female. All right, Dallin. Like it's a sport. <laughs> All right, Dal. Dallin's an interesting name. You ever ask your parents why they named you Dallin? D a l l o n. It's a long, boring story, but yeah, I do know the reason why they named me that. Yeah. It's a long, boring story. Do you ever think about doing it in your minute? Because it would really fit your brand I if said you. Long. Uh, I said long story. I don't, I don't have time for a short, boring story. I love it. 60 seconds is a short, boring story. Dallin, we pull names out of this bucket of all different shapes and sizes, and it's always fun to see everybody get a different shot. I love that you're a fan of the show. I love that you came out here and uh, gave it a shot. Thanks for having the Real courage. fast. Though. Oh, I, shit. I, 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 I this never works out when people do this thing that you're about to do. You go oh, ahead, no, though. On, Let's no, see. No. You could be the chosen one. I need one. to tell you why I, I signed up. Okay, Dallin. I'm asking for a huge favor. Oh, this is the worst massive, of the worst. It favor. doesn't get any worse than this. Get got, ready. Oh, I, want, I get one want money for sick kids. Watch. No, 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 no. I get one Shut free up. get out of jail then. I've been like five kill Tonys. I've been signing up the last few weeks for one reason only. Okay. And you are all about to pick on me. I don't care. This is how much I badly want this job. I want to be Joe Rogan's bartender at his new club. Okay. Okay. Let me tell you something, Dallin. I love that. I love that. I asked him. I asked him at one point during this interview, "What's the coolest thing about you?" And he goes, "Oh man, I don't. This is. I don't want to sound narcissistic." And then he just literally asked for the <laughs> coolest job ever invented. I just want to be the. Look, I've never bartended. Have you ever bartend before? Uh, I'm a legit bartender. Yeah. Like well, I mean, not really, <laughs> because I literally asked you what you do for a living, and you're like, can't tell you that. But I'll tell you, my side job is uh, kayaking and scuba diving. <laughs> Nowhere did you mention bartending. There's literally been someone recruited and hired that people <laughs> that literally comedians give her money to hang out with them. That's who you're competing against. And she, she's already got the job, Dal, and you're a psychopath for asking that. I don't even know who you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> I know. How would you know? How would you know, know who the biggest know. bartender in the comedy business is? How could you possibly? She's literally. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> let's, ask, let's, ask, let's ask Joe exactly. This guy thinks, yep, exactly. This guy thinks he should be the bartender. Joe, what do you think? That's nonsense. Okay, there you go. That's the answer from Joe. I love that you had the balls to ask, though. Wait, wait. There might be multiple bartenders at this position, so, you know, I'm sure... <laughs> There's not a snowflake's chance in hell this guy's getting a bartending job. Joe, job Joe said utter wow, nonsense. Wow, really? Why would... Why, why, it's, okay, wow. let, let's do this, what Dallin, you because about? you seem really disappointed Man. about this. So let, let's ask you, because this is a good opportunity that you have. This is the one... I like you, by by the way, Dallin, I like you. Thank you. I just wouldn't hire you for a bartending spot at Joe's Club. You're not hiring but me. I'm asking you for a recommendation for Joe to hire me. A hundred percent. Listen, I mean, there's a thing. There's a thing with this, and it's like a lot of people ask for things when they're not qualified. Uh, you don't know I'm, I'm qualified. How are you? Give us. Okay, in this, in that case, this just got all very interesting. Tell us exactly your resume, and if it impresses us. We'll call Joe Rogan right now on speakerphone. Give us your bartending wow. resume. Let me remind you. You know he's not going to answer, though. But okay, what? Cool. He's not going to answer. He's too busy. Oh, what? Okay, Dallin. He'll he's answer. not going to answer your fucking phone call. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this fucking guy. He's not going to answer my phone call. Hey, Tony, give me a recommendation. He's not going to answer you. You're the fucking... I don't even get it, dude. I'll tell you what. Let's make a bet. Okay. If you call him tonight and he answers... Then you got to give me a recommendation that he get, at least gives me an interview. Do no. you hear yourself? I do. I do, do you hear yourself? You I'm, just I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You see. Give pretty, us your resume, Dallin. See, oh man, it makes my no resume. sense. If if I call him and he picks up, I have to give the recommendation. <laughs> like, do you even hear yourself? No, no. If he doesn't pick up. If he doesn't pick up. That's Dallin, what I'm to okay, say. The shut bit. the yeah, fuck yeah. up. Tell us your resume. Tell us your bartending resume. This is so interesting. I mean, I've bartended in multiple cities, multiple states. Me too. Uh, Maybe I should be okay, the bartender. You know what? Uh, Matthew McConaughey's uh, charity event, I've been his private bartender for the last four years. Ah! U <laughs> UT coaches? Yeah, yeah, all those guys. <laughs> you wanted a resume? I don't know. What else have you done? 
What else have I done for bartending? Yeah, dude, the job you're asking so, for, yeah. Hold and, on. And be on it. Okay, I'm not be trying to, on it. I'm not trying to be cool, but I name drop UT coaches. I name drop Matthew McConaughey, and that's not a good enough resume? <laughs> I did all their private parties. Like, all right. I did all their private parties. Like, literally, like, that's... How many private parties is Matthew dozens McConaughey Dozens over doing? the course of four or five years. Yeah, okay, yeah. dozens of times you bartended private parties. <laughs> Do you hear I, I don't yourself? know what you're asking me, man. I Do don't you know, know how many know. giant comedy clubs there are across the country with bartenders that have worked there for decades that, like, everyone knows? That's at a club, though. Um, you asked for my resume. I was trying to think of the most thing that might impress you, which obviously nothing does, but it's okay. No, I'm, it I'm could have. Right, you could right, right, Let me just ask, what is, I'm going to give you a drink, and you tell me what's in it then, if you're a bartender. I knew you are going to do that. That's so funny. All right. Okay. All right, so what's, uh, what's in a commonwealth? I have no clue. Okay, how about an old-fashioned? Let's do something super easy, an old-fashioned. I know this one. You must know this one. There's multiple versions of an old-fashioned. Not really. Oh, no, there is. N- of there course, is. Of course you could say that. How about a basic old-fashioned? This is a very simple... I have a delicious whistle pig whiskey that I uh, utilize at mm. home, a bunch of different... That's an, another local Austin brand that I absolutely love, and I love making an old-fashioned. If you need help, I'll help you. I could tell you how to do it, but you... Help me. Yeah, no, I need help, definitely. Do you like do it muddled? Do you like your fruit muddled or no? No. There's do you a, want sugar on the there's rim? There's no, no muddled fruit in an old-fashioned. no old muddled fruit in an old-fashioned, really? No? Are you sure? Yeah, I'm okay. fucking positive, okay. dude. All right. Are you sure? <laughs> you know I bartended for years. You know this? No, I didn't know that. Well, you just fucking learned, didn't you, Dad? And Jesus you've never, Christ, these you've people. never muddled fruit. You've never been asked to muddle the fruit for an old fashioned. Never, mm-hmm. not once. There is not a, once you ever. Can, you can add an orange rind. You can add. Look at the bartenders shaking their fucking heads back there, literally going like this. They want to cut your fucking head off. You're talking about muddling fruit. Yeah, the, bar- the bartenders here shocked that you're asking for this. Hold on, she wants to say something. This is gonna be fucking great. how many of you people think we should break a glass over this guy's head right now huh no we're gonna let you off easy there's a pair of underwear there he goes Dallin Garrett everybody an extra long interview Dallin thank you buddy thank you so much man Dallin Garrett (laughs) Kaylee Funk give him a little kick in the rear that was fucking ridiculous (laughs) Kaylee Funk more qualified to be the bartender at Rogan's Club. Still hasn't asked for it. Dallin Garrett decided to use it as his closer. Wait, Remember, I... before he asked about that, I said this never goes well. By the way, he couldn't even do two <laughs> drinks. Like, two out of two <laughs> drinks, he didn't know. But to be fair, the one I asked from the Commonwealth does have 71 <laughs> ingredients in it. <laughs> but an old-fashioned really only has three and it's whiskey, half the amount of uh, sweet vermouth to that whiskey, two whiskey to one vermouth with a couple dashes of bitters, and a little, maybe a couple cherries or an orange rind. A little bit of plain water. But you never crush the fucking cherries, and you don't crush the fucking orange rind. Don't pop the cherries. Don't pop the cherries. Unbelievable. He was definitely a cop, right? <laughs> totally a cop. <laughs> Totally a cop. <laughs> By the way, on the way Warren home, Greed. Yep. The other the other night, I got I was getting pulled over on the way home from a show, oh. and I was like, "Oh fuck, here we go!" And then the cop pulled over and just gave me a peace sign and went away. So I, it might have been him. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty crazy out here. Texas knows what's going on. Shout out to the. Uh, how many people love the police here in Austin, Texas? Okay, still not ready to give police love. Just checking. How many of you love H-E-B? How how, how about the police? Oh, okay. Still nothing. How about H-E-B? All right, here he is, everybody. It's Warren Greed. Oh, hello. This is a daydream come true. Holy shit. Uh, I haven't been doing this that long, but I think I'm still doing it because all the comedians are really encouraging. I had someone come up to me after show once. They said, Warren, I think all of your jokes are really good, but none of them are funny. <laughs> I'm going to show you what he means by that. Uh, I, went, I went to the store to buy half and half, but I could only afford one. <laughs> uh, a homeless person asked me for some change, so I took a shit on his front steps. 
one, a one-way road meets a two-way road, it forms a three-way stop. But in my opinion, if you want to make a three-way stop faster, you can put a finger in my asshole. I actually did just find out I was, uh, I found out I was, bi I was bisexual, so I ended, up running a lot of I ended up running a lot of stop signs. <laughs> I don't know how much time I have. Uh, I don't think I have any more jokes, but I did, I did originally want to be a uh, prop comedian, but you guys know how that story goes. I left them in my car. Warren Greed, everybody. Warren. Warren, I loved your set. How would you like to be the new bartender at Joe Rogan's Comedy Club? I think you're overqualified for the position. I love you as the uh, I love you as the producer of Tim Dillon's podcast. You're incredible. I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Congratulations on yeah, the marriage. It was, a it was a beautiful wedding. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Hell yeah. I'm, Congrats I'm really on your wedding. It's hilarious. Warren, welcome to the show. How long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, I've done it a couple half dozen times. All right. Awesome. You're right. You're on fucking great pace, man. Doing real jokes. You fucking, uh, you absolutely blew Dallin Garrett out of the water. And he's a scuba Dude, diver, so I, that's hard to do. I was really nervous until I saw him go up. And I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> I'm good now. I was really nervous. Hey. Hey, but, but I saw him. But come Tony, up. I think seriously, that's like the number one thing when you're a, a new comic and you go into an open mic oh, yeah. and you're like nervous about your shit and you see the shit in front of you I and you go, you "Oh, know, I could do this." I this swear to God, that's the story of my first time ever at the comedy store. Was the first time I ever signed up for an open mic. It was my very first time at a comedy club, and I somehow got out of 15 people. I somehow was lucky enough to be like number 11. And I watched those first... T at first, I'm like, I don't belong here. Uh, this is crazy that I'm starting at the comedy store. And then I watched people, and I'm like, I might be one of the greatest comedians of all time after this one first spot. I like, think that's the thing that make, that drives comics. Though. It really is incredible. Thank you. Shout out to all the horrible comics that keep... That keep... Uh, that keep mediocre comics going so that they can one day become great. Uh, so Warren, let's talk about your life. How old are you? Twenty-four. Twenty-four years old. Just yeah. a little fucking baby bear out here. Just nice, fucking. nice and tight, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Oh, very tight, very tight. Absolutely. I keep it. Uh, twenty-four years old. What do you do for work? Uh, I work security. security. Really? What the fuck oh, are you uh, gonna uh, stop? Like a cop. Jesus Christ! You're a security guard. Oh, it's a super easy job. Super easy. Where well, Where are you a security guard at? Oh, I can't. I, oh, Discovery I Zone. <laughs> this is. <laughs> Uh, I mostly guard a uh, empty parking garage. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. What do you you ever have to enforce any rules? No, I I basically just I just kind of just sit. I just kind of sit in my car and then I wait for a phone call that goes something like, "Hey, someone's smoking weed in the uh, parking lot. Do you guys want to take care of it?" I'm like, "Sure." <laughs> Hang you, up. You go I up and you smoke their weed. I stop smoking weed. Oh, okay. Call back five 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 minutes later and I tell them I took care of the problem. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. All You're right. useless. I want to say useless to the people who pay me. To them, I'm very valuable. I'm worth 13 an hour. Hell yeah, 13 an hour. Look Embarrass me. Embarrass me in front of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Warren Greed, what else? You're 24 years old. What, is, what are 24-year-olds doing for fun nowadays? You out there uh, TikToking yourself, slipping no. on banana peels or something like that? Like, what's going on? I, I don't know what other 24-year-olds are doing for fun, but whatever they're doing, that's, that's not what I'm doing. How about you? What do you do for fun? Dude, uh, I don't know. I, I ski. I like to, I would say work out, but I think, I think everyone would just laugh if I said that. Uh -huh. yeah. Where do you ski at? Uh, well, <laughs> I suppose we're, I'm in Texas now, but I'm originally from Minnesota, so oh, I, got, okay. I got a lot of that real crappy icy snow up there. When did you move from Minnesota? Uh, last March? No, two Marches ago. Oh, okay. Oh, no. You don't have the voice at all, the, the no, Minnesota no. shit. Minnesota. We yeah. say pop. Ugh. I say pop. What? Why Why we we say got? pop. We say pop, too. Why don't you get your eyeballs shaved so you don't have to wear those fucking things on your face? <laughs> have you ever thought about getting the LASIK surgery? No, well, uh, I, I, wear, I, I wear these glasses so then people don't uh, give me their kids because I really hate them. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you definitely they give you some real Jeffrey Dahmer energies for sure. Those are, uh, yeah. those are, there you go. 
Uh, I love it. What else, Warren? Tell us a crazy fun fact about your life that would surprise us. Perhaps your family <laughs> or uh, your upbringing or something else. Uh, I was this. This was surprised you. I was a uh, president of a fraternity. You That's are kind of surprising, yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah. Hogwarts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that, like Revenge of the Nerd style. Like like you had your own like like. I mean we. I mean. We were a little nerdier, I mean, obviously, but yeah, if, I was. If you're the leader, I was eventually the... elected the leader, so that's cool. I definitely worked my way up there. Wow, what was your fraternity known for? Uh, excellence, hand uh, jobs, greasy oh little hand jobs in your ass. You, you could build a PC. What's your love life like, Warren? Do you uh, have a girlfriend? No, pretty barren right now. Oh, what a shocker! I know. <laughs> Fuck. I mean, you ever try? Have you ever been with a girl and you take your glasses off and you shake your head like that and you turn into like a hot guy? <laughs> Has that ever uh, happened to you? No, it's never. Could uh, it? Have you Have you ever tried? Have you thought about trying it? No, I, I I'm, I'm thinking about it now. Oh, wait, how many of you think you should try it right now, huh? Hold on, wait, wait. Take your time. Take your time. Make the audience want it a little bit, right, Warren? Just get ready and. Uh, Oh, jeez, Louise. There you go. Okay, there it is. There it is. We tried our best. I don't know. I think there was a bit of an improvement there. Ladies, you agree? Worn without the glasses? Yeah. Man, there are some fucking chicks in here that will fuck anything yeah. tonight. That's incredible. <laughs> I, 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 I want to know, how do you s keep from... Slipping down the toilet when you poo. <laughs> doesn't he look like he'd go right through the bowl? He doesn't even have an ass. What size waist are you? 28, 29? Uh, yeah, about, about 29, yeah. 29, yeah. there you go. Yeah. You know how I know that? We have the same waist, my oh, friend. Shit. Yeah, absolutely. His comedy was very good, though. Yeah. Well, kidding aside, you look like, uh, I don't know what. <laughs> but comedy's good. <laughs> It was good, Warren, and you know what? For your hard work, not only is Brian Holtzman going to give you a gift, but I'm going to give you one of these extremely limited edition. Uh, you, use, uh, you write your jokes in a book? Really? You'll use this? That's a handmade leather Kill Tony joke book from Adrian Cavazos. Again, that's Bonesy on Instagram with a Z, B O N E Z E Y E. Also, some women's panties. He got uh, a see through one, too. And a microphone keychain. Heck yeah. You could put those panties on uh, on the on the blow up doll that you have at home. <laughs> All right. All right. Said so it. Can can I leave? I'm very nervous. Unless you're about to ask for a job, you're not prepared to take or anything like that. We're no. good. There goes Warren Greed, everybody. <laughs> He's on social media. Warren Greed, all one word. We're having fun here tonight. What do you guys think? Should we do a special treat? You guys want a special treat? How many of you have been fans of Kill Tony for a long time? Well, then you're going to love this, everybody. All the way from Los Angeles, California. I mean, this guy, an absolute murderer. Very, very, very famously incredible joke writer. Incredible Wait, roaster. A, uh, a prolific, <laughs> prolific Kill Tony regular. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the one, the only, David Lucas, everybody. Here he is, live in the flesh with a brand new minute. Here he is. Yeah, uh, I think women uh, are a little stupid <laughs> because y'all really think giving us the silent treatment is punishment. <laughs> it's like, bitch, I enjoy that shit. You, sh you should give me the silent treatment more often. Maybe this relationship will work. It's like, how did you think you were punishing me by being quiet? I ain't got to hear about your shitty ass day. Uh, slaves used to work from uh, sun up to sun down. That shit was crazy to me. Do y'all think they were uh, happy as hell come daylight savings? <laughs> like, hey man, the sun go down next week at five o'clock. You sure about that? <laughs> like, yeah, that's what boss said. Like, if I was a slave owner, I would have confused the fuck out of slaves. I would have had uh, blackout curtains in my slave quarters. <laughs> Them niggas will never know what time it is. <laughs> All right, thank y'all, man. Thank you.
Hell yeah, another minute from David Lucas. <laughs> Welcome back. I My love it. Told I, it. I love it how often you're here from Los yeah. Angeles visiting us. Yeah, you zipped up today, Nick. Yeah, man. Yeah. I like your uh, I like <laughs> you. You actually wore some you wore something other than camouflage tonight. Look at it. Brian, we need, to hold, we need to hold on on the underwear for just a second. Um, <laughs> Brian Holt's been getting more and more excited to give away <laughs> underwear on this show. It's incredible. Uh, actually, y'all don't know, that's Tony's private collection. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. You son of a bitch. The pu- <laughs> if you smell it, the pussy part smells like dick. Oh, my. Why would you say that? <laughs> I love it. You're wearing a Dennis Rodman shirt today. Yeah, this your side, nigga. <laughs> I don't, I don't really know about that. <laughs> but you're shaped like a basketball, so you know what's up. <laughs> you're good on the court, the food court. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. You're repping Chicago because you thought it was the Wendy's city. <laughs> Tony, you, Tony, you dress like a cat burglar about to break into a dildo factory. <laughs> <laughs> these, these dildo jokes get me every time. For the record, I've never owned a dildo before. Whatever. I love it. I love that you're repping Dennis Rodman, though. You're yeah. good at dunking donuts. <laughs> <laughs> you're what a lot of girls consider their worst rebound. <laughs> yes. But you look up to Dennis Rodman because he can jump. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is you Dennis only like Rodman, <laughs> David Lucas jokes, everybody. Yeah. Tony likes donuts because they remind them of assholes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why? why would donuts remind me of assholes? Because they got the little part in the middle where you can barely stick a finger in it. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I love it. Are you a big fan of basketball? Yeah, I was. I grew up watching. Uh, you are Dikembe Mutubi. <laughs> <laughs> That's so stupid. Uh, you are always Phil the Jackson. Tony, you only play Chicago Bulls joke. Tony got on the basketball team just for the showers. <laughs> <laughs> Is it shower time yet? <laughs> no, nigga, it's halftime. <laughs> <laughs> David specializes in the full court panini press. <laughs> <laughs> Tony only played basketball so he could ass check people. <laughs> hey, back it up over here. Back it up over here. I got him. I got him. <laughs> the only time David boxes out is when he's leaving a restaurant. <laughs> it's a to go box joke. For those of you that didn't get that one. I love it. You only play ping pong because the balls can fit in your mouth. How did you even know that? <laughs> I love uh, ping pong balls in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. David, what have you been doing fun in uh, Austin, Texas this week? You've been here. Uh, you... Yeah, opened up. Well, featured. I ain't going to say opened up. I'm a little better than that. Mm-hmm. Uh, featured for Shab this past weekend. Oh, cool. Uh, did I do Red Band Secret Show this week? Yep, did Red Band mm-hmm. Se- Secret Show this week. Uh, the dude from Kill Tony murdered. Yeah. The oh, dude, Ellen. he was yeah. amazing. Who? He murdered. The little, the little Ellen DeGeneres looking boy. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, uh, Lucas. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. He, Yo, Lucas McCary. All right, so Lucas, you might have remembered him on uh, Kill Tony was 500. 500. Yeah. Uh, he's the he, she, or whatever. He destroyed so hard, like yeah. like literally harder than I've ever seen somebody destroy in a yeah. long time. Yeah, that killed. everyone after it had like bad sets. It was insane. It's a shame. It's like a, it's a seven minute set. It's a shame he's non-binary because it would have been the best set by a female anybody's ever seen. <laughs> we could almost claim that's it. true. Could almost I could write an hour for that dude, bro. I yeah, could, like because the way he dressed, the way he looked, the way he talked, it's like, bro, you got a monopoly on comedy, right? Yeah, I've been giving uh, yeah, 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 uh, a, 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 a spot every <laughs> single week now because uh, I just love watching yeah, it go just, up. Just call him them, them. Just yeah, yeah, them. but that's one person. I know the. I hate him. I hate that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, only, only person I'm scared to follow actually is Brian Holtzman. That's the only person. Yeah. Oh, well, are God. you in town Thursday? 
Uh, nah, I'm in uh, Atlanta. Right. Fuck. <laughs> Atlanta? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. What are you doing in Atlanta? Finding you a boyfriend. Oh, come on. <laughs> <You> got, <laughs> I don't even have a boyfriend in Atlanta. <laughs> I'm about to get you one. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Ask him uh, if he has ping pong balls. Yeah, he... he. <laughs> I love it. Really, what are you doing in Atlanta? You doing I got some show? shows out there and going to see my mama. Okay. Yeah. And I'll be right back Saturday. All right. Yeah. Very cool. Well, David, you're an absolute murderer. Yeah, bro. I appreciate we, you, man. We absolutely love you. Another great new minute. Another yeah. great set of roast jokes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the biggest one I could find. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> David Lucas. There he goes. He can give that to one of his many baby mamas. Brian, can I ask you a question, Holtzman? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, did, sir. Did you get all this underwear at the thrift store? Goodwill. <laughs> Where Good do you? Goodwill. The jacket too. What do you think? What do you think? He went to the new releases of Victoria's Secret. <laughs> spent a thousand bucks on fucking underwear before coming here. <laughs> the man lives with an Indian family. <laughs> right. Gareth Fisk is next. How about a big hand for Kaylee? Kaylee, look Kaylee. at these people. Take off your mask for a second. Show them your beautiful face. Yes. Blow them a kiss or something wild. It's Kaylee Funk, Look everybody. at those lips. Perfect lips. She refuses to be likable. Oh, she flips off the audience for some reason. Whoa, Brian. Oh, hey, Brian. Brian, what are you doing? <laughs> Kaylee, get, get out of here. <laughs> Well, She's just forcing got, us right. into a Me Too situation. Okay, uh, thank God this isn't Jesus live anymore. Jesus fucking Christ, man. <laughs> Kaylee, please don't tempt Brian Holtzman like that again. I just saw him finger. Oh, here's Gareth Fisk, everybody. Come on, one more time for Gareth, everyone. Thank you. I need that shit. Uh, I'm about to hopefully do very well. Yeah. So Amy Schumer, if she were to move to Austin, Texas, I bet she'd steal all of my barbecue. If Amy Schumer ever moved to Austin, Texas... I bet you she would steal all of my queso, too. If Amy Schumer ever moved to Austin, Texas, I bet you she would eat all of my breakfast tacos as well. And just by, if you didn't know this, I have a really bad diet, so sometimes my poop really smells. But I bet if Amy Schumer knew that my poop that's very stinky could tell a good joke, She'd probably steal that, too. I really, really wish I could have the same parking spot as our Governor Greg Abbott does at 4 p.m. at HEB. God, that would be so lit. That's my time. Thank you so much, y'all. Good Lord Almighty. <laughs> Garrett Fisk. This, it was better than the last shit last week. Y'all couldn't even air <laughs> What are you bad. talking about? We couldn't I'm air sorry. it. What do you mean we couldn't air it? Like I'm first sorry. of all, well, I looked stop saying you're sorry. Breathe for a second, Gareth. I can already tell you're very excited right now. <laughs> what are you talking about? We couldn't air what happened last week. Well, first of all, look, Brian Holtzman's here. No, nope, just here. not first of all. Answer the fucking question that I just asked you. I looked it up. What did you look up? The the show. It wasn't aired from last week, unfortunately. You're talking about one week ago here yeah, at Antones. Oh, you were is on that this not show? how it goes? I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's not how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> God, you're horrible, Garrett. Thank you. I every possible it. way. Uh, wow, what the fuck did you say up here? What was all the what was all that Amy Schumer stuff supposed to mean? I don't really like her. She steals a lot of shit. Yeah, but well, why would you do those jokes? It seemed. <laughs> It, it was like, like she low. wrote those jokes herself. That's it's what beautiful. that's what it's like if she writes her own jokes. Uh, you're you're so fucking right. I'm, I, that was terrible. Honestly, God fucking hates me. Like I can't believe I got up here for the second week in a row. It's pretty crazy. This is my third show like ever in front of an audience that like gives a shit. Thank y'all for laughing at some of it. I they don't give it. a shit, and yeah. they did not laugh at any no. of it. No, oh, I got some chuckles. It was alright. What are you talking about? Fuck. I don't think you know what they're laughing at exactly. I don't think you realize what's going on. Hold on. Kaylee is throwing something on this stage. This is all brought to you by Fix Vodka. I don't know what's happening here, but Fix Vodka is out. That's her peonies. Oh, my God. Hey, Kaylee, fuck. Let me get hit. Let me get hit. No, no. <laughs> you guys, stop it. You're being fucking beyond disgusting right now. Yeah, all right. Yeah, this is a little creepy, Brian. No, you shut the fuck up. 
I'll, I'll try. You're the creepiest thing on this stage right now, Gareth. I'm not that creepy. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Fuck. What's a redeeming quality about you, Gareth? Because I fucking hate you right now. To give me a oh, reason to shit. like you. No, think about the question that I just asked. And then give an answer. I give try me to be a, a nice reason guy to as much like as possible. You. Are you listening at all? You're talking <laughs> while I'm still talking. Give me a reason to like you, Gareth. I try to be a nice guy when I can, you know. I'm doing this. This is my third time again, like, on a stage. So I'm pretty fucking stoked to be here in general. So, Okay. Okay, Gareth. Fuck. That's your answer? Yes, that it, was my answer, and it was shitty. Has anyone ever told you you're funny before or anything yeah, like that? Yeah, I've, I've gotten that a mo- many a times, unfortunately. Many a times? Unfortunately, clearly they were all fucking lying. Do you work at an autistic like hospital or something <laughs> like that? I speak mainly to autistic homeowners, yes. That's exactly what happens. What do you do for work? Uh, so I work over at, uh, well, I do online sales. We'll just say that. I sell a lot of uh, solar equipment and do other shit around those lines, whatever makes it. Okay, me. Gareth, Make good shut money. up, shut up, shut up. Listen to me. Fuck. Go do open mics other places. Take a couple weeks off signing up for this show. Go do other open mics. Try different things. Don't ever do those fucking, <laughs> nothing worse than a bad Amy Schumer joke. Like, Fuck. I mean, if you're going to bring up Amy Schumer, you got to crank that fucking thing out of the park. you got to hit the nail on the head. I mean, there's so much there to make fun of. And you're talking about there's her stealing her breakfast to tacos. Of, for sure, also, I may I make the suggestion that when you're ever on a podcast, to listen to what's happening in the current time. Like, if someone's talking at the exact Fuck moment, yes. Maybe, Fuck yes. maybe that's not the best it's moment right to talk. There he goes, Gareth Fisk, everybody. He's I been appreciate prescribed, it. Thank uh, you. He's been prescribed other open mics and time off. Very rarely do I tell someone not to sign up. There he goes. Gareth, there he goes. There he goes. You, you Almost w- walking off the side of the stage, this fucking guy. How loud can this place boo for Gareth Fisk, huh? Yeah. Go ahead, Kaylee. Go ahead. Kaylee. Kaylee's a little firecracker tonight. She can't keep wow. that middle finger to herself. Uh, hi, honey. I'm home. Oh, oh I had a hard day. Kaylee.funk73, right? I had a hard day, honey. I'm going to fuck you oh, up. Fuck you up. Oh, man. You want to get up in there? <laughs> Jack Timmons is next. Jack Timmons is next on Kill Tony. That's right. Jack Timmons. You guys having fun out there? Anybody thinking about signing up next week? Uh Uh-oh, there's one chick that's delusional. There we go. What? You want a woman up here? All right, we'll do that next. We'll we'll pull until we get a woman up here. Yeah, bring it up. There you go. Absolutely. Did you sign up? You signed up? Okay. Here he is, Jack Timmons, everybody. Hey. Guys, my dad's kind of gay. My other dad is really gay. <laughs> it's cool. They wrestle sometimes. At least that's what it looked like that one time. I thought they were having sex too, but then there's a third guy in there dressed like a referee, so I, don't, I really don't know what was going on. I'll be honest. Having gay dads is cool because like, when you're a kid, some kid will come up to you and be like, my dad can kick the shit out of your dad. And you're like, oh, buddy, that's a tag team fight, my friend. It doesn't even matter that they're gay. That's two on one. That's just a numbers game, baby. They'll fuck him up, prison style, and they wrestle. They know what they're doing. He'll come to school the next day, pick you up, just like usual. Except this time, he's standing in between my two gay dads. He's holding their pockets. It's my third gay dad. He dresses like a referee now. Damn it. I thought I was close to the minute. I'm ending it there. There, it there is. we That's go. That's a minute. Sure, absolutely. Jack Timmons, everybody. Jack, you've been on this show before? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, What happened last time you were on? Remind me. Um, it was Joe and Adam. Uh-huh. What and happened? And went well. What did we find out in your interview part? What's oh, stuff? it's uh, my job, personal trainer, oh, where yeah. I work. By the way, uh-huh. you asked to come on like over to the country club and play golf uh-huh. and have not hit me up yet. So. Okay. You, just you, saying. I'm just saying. You, you work at a country club. Yeah. Austin Country Club. No, River Place. Okay. Oh, 
That sounds yeah, great. <laughs> that sounds awesome. I will. <laughs> Message me on Instagram or something like that to yeah, remind me. Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Okay, River, River Place sucks. I'll fucking come, <laughs> uh, I'll come play at your country Fuck club. Yeah. I love it. Uh, so, Jack, you work at a country club. You're a personal trainer. Or you're bo- you have two dads? They're gay? No, my uncle, but it's kind of Your where uncle's I got gay? From. Not like blood related, but he is very gay still. Did they ever fuck around with you as a kid? No, not like that, but he's cool, you know. But you have a gay uncle? Yeah. But not your blood uncle? No. What do you mean exactly? He was my dad's RA in college, and now they're best friends. RA? What, what is that like? Like, in, like his resident. The Re- rear admiral or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Okay. I love it. So what, what, does he, what does he do for work? My dad or my no, gay, your uncle? gay uncle? Who gives a shit about your boring ass dad? We're talking <laughs> about your butt fucking uncle, my friend. Um, he's like a, uh, I don't know, he, he does like sales stuff, but like higher speed, he never tells me. It's more interesting that he's gay, I think. It's okay. like really boring stuff, but I don't even know what the title is. I love it. What's your love life like, Jack? You seem like the kind of guy that uh, has banged a dude before. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm single right now, baby, yeah. Yeah? What are you into? What's your dream girl or boy? What are they like? Like, if, Look out in the audience and point to someone that you consider your type. And, I'm just gonna, anyway, anyone that's going to f- have sex with me, back there, you, maybe. Oh, okay. So, n- nobody. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I really, I really gave you a softball there, and you just uh, <laughs> did nothing with it. I love it. What, have you been in a relationship? Yeah. I, uh, last relationship was like eight months ago. Okay. Yeah, what like happened there? How long was that for? Year and a half. Okay. And what happened? Uh, we broke up, and I lost 60 pounds and moved to Texas. Where was this at? Where was the relationship at? Ohio. Oh, yeah. I'm from Columbus. That was okay. another thing. Yeah. And you broke up. Uh, she broke up with you or you broke up with her or him or what? What is this? Broke up with me. She broke up with you? Yeah. Why? I don't know. I was, I was fat and living in Ohio, so I you changed that. You were just 60 that. pounds more? Were you a personal trainer back then? No. <laughs> no, you were just a little fat boy. Yeah, yeah Look yeah. at you now. Does, I know. Does that, girl, does that girl know that uh, you've gotten in shape and that you're cool and like... I think so. We don't follow each other on anything anymore you don't no really you were with you were together for a year and a half she doesn't know anything about you yeah i drank a lot after we broke up and then just woke up to a lot of texts i probably shouldn't have sent uh, so that's like, ohio shit like yeah. what can you give us an example of like a text that you, send? you know well you know like when you like uh there's always that like uh text you send like the one that you write like write in a notes draft you're like, this is going to be the one. <laughs> right. This and then I got drunk and sent that one like five times. Oh, shit. She was just getting railed at the time, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no way for you to know that she was just bent over s- <laughs> squirting. <laughs> right. I, was, I was really highlighting the fact that she made a good decision, I think, yeah. with every one of those. But now look at you. Do you, think, do you think she'd be into this uh, 60 pounds less, more uh, muscular, wears right. his shirt tucked in, yeah. went to... Went to, went to fucking, uh, what's the, uh, Warby Parkers for glasses or something like that? Like, you have a, you like look, a look like you went through an extreme makeover. Queer eye for the straight guy or something like yeah. that. I, uh, I don't know. I haven't asked her, but... But you don't even care. You've moved on, haven't you? No, I don't you? care. When's I've the last time you went on a date? Eight months, eight months ago. ago. Really? When's yeah. the last time you kissed a girl? Eight months ago? It's eight months ago, yeah. Eight months is a long time. Is there a girl in the this? audience that wants to give this guy a kiss on oh, the yeah. lips? This is a Kill Tony. Uh, this is a Kill Tony tradition. We have the best fans here at Kill Tony. If there's an audience member, any woman out there with the courage to come up and give this man, it's been eight long months. The crowd will go wild. Everybody will appreciate you. It, we've never failed at this. We know that there's a girl out there that's willing to do this. Is really making. Well, it. shout out your Instagram if you do it. Is oh, there they all come. <laughs> uh, how about a gay guy? Is there <laughs> a gay, is there a gay guy in the audience willing to kiss this man on the lips? I did shit. It's been eight months. I fucking. There's nobody. <laughs> no, no, Kaylee. It costs money if Kaylee does it. <laughs> There's not a single lady out here that wants to give this guy a kiss? Dang, that set wasn't that bad. Huh? 
Oh, oh, yeah. Are you vaccinated? Thing. Are you vaccinated? Have you had the coronavirus yet? I'm I'm working on it. Hold on, Kaylee wants to check you out. We do the whole thing. Uh-oh. All right. Uh-oh. Okay. Kaylee, hold on. Okay. Hold on a second, everyone. Kaylee's oh, making. Yeah, I haven't do kissed my girlfriend yeah. in a couple weeks. Okay. I, hey. I, don't think, I guess. The, I guess. You hold on, it? everybody. Doesn't count for some people. Here's Kaylee. Got this sexy serial killer look. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? the type that like, is he gonna make love to me or is he gonna fucking butcher Kaylee, me? Kaylee, are you gonna give it him a kiss or are you just gonna goes. run your yeah, fucking mouth? Yeah, something in my ass, bro. All right. Look yeah. at it again. How many of you think Kaylee should give this man a big smooch on the lips, huh? <laughs> Holy sh... Whoa! Oh, my God. I love it. Damn, I think Hold I'm on. gay. Kaylee. Jeez. <laughs> How about a big hand for Kaylee Funk? Can I taste your mouth? Kaylee. Can I taste your mouth? I want to taste Kelly. (laughs) Hold on. Perhaps a kiss from Brian Holtzman. Hey, you can eat my ass for free, Brian. All right. This show is chaos right now. How about another hand for Jack Timmons, everybody? There he goes. He's on social media. Sexy tool shed, all one word. Look at those. Mr. Sexy tool shed on social media. Big pair of underwear and yet another microphone. I like your excitement, kids. Keep at it. There you it's go. not as fun when Kaylee does that. Yeah, that's it's just really not, not fair. Yeah, we know? won't do that again. <laughs> but we love you. Kaylee's the best. What a good spirit up here. Hi. Giving out kisses. Hi, honey. I'm home. Since no other ladies wanted to be fun tonight. And yeah. just for that, I'm not going to pull a female comedian out. I promised before this that I was going to. And now, since no one wanted to have fun... Let's do Charler Adams is the next on Kill Charler. Tony. Charler. That's a new name. That's Could a be w- a lady. We'll see what happens. Yeah. I've never heard of a Charler before. Yeah, Anything can happen here. Uh, uh, uh. It's for the state you go. Why? Step back from that. <laughs> Step back from that. Ledge, Ledge my, my friend. friend. You gotta step back. What takes him so long to get here? <laughs> There's a big holding chamber up there. A lot of stairs. It's my fault. I should have picked the name. Oh, wow. Here comes Charler Adams. No, keep going that way. You're doing the right thing, Charler. Nope, nope, not that way, Charler. Come on. Keep coming towards the stage. Here he is. This is very exciting. God. This is going to be great. I already know this is going to be great. Make some noise one more time. Come on, Austin, Texas. It's Charler Adams. Boom. What's up? You know what it is. Fuck y'all then. Hell yeah. I just want to let you know I just completed my fourth year as a teacher assistant. Thank you. Fuck them kids. <laughs> now, for real, I remember my first day of school. I show up to the classroom. I was like, good, good afternoon, class. Uh, my name is Charles Adams. I'm going to be your teacher for the rest of the semester. And one of the kids in the back, go fuck your mother. I said, what kind of bitch? I'll fuck your mom on a Zoom call, motherfucker. <laughs> Share that shit with all her Tupperware friends. I ain't playing around. I'm a double meat cheeseburger, baby. You know what I'm saying? You ain't number a little vegan patty, little bitch. You know, I ain't say it out loud, but I said it to myself. You know what I mean? I take my, I take my class out to the playground. You know, I don't even call the playground the playground anymore. I call that shit the yard. Yeah. One time I saw two kids out there fighting. I was like, hey, y'all break that shit up. Break it up. What the fuck I tell you about fighting without a referee? Thank you. Hell yeah, Charles Adams. I'm sorry that I I you called you my name I up, called man. you Charler because uh, because your S looked like an R the way oh, that it was bad. written. That's what we I call that's what we call in the business a hard R. Okay. When you can't quite read it like that. Ouch! When you can't, it's an S that R. Yeah. Well, we call it ninja. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Charles, you've been on this show before. I remember you being on. I <laughs> yes, made a sir. joke about how you look like Kimbo Slice. It went over really well. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, Rest everybody in, in town's been using that shit too. I know, man. Ah, really everybody is. go, oh, you don't kill Tony, you Kimbo Slice. I'm like, bitch, I'll hit you in the face. <laughs> That's right. Not you. I'm sorry. I was just Charles out here <laughs> scaring innocent white people <laughs> in the front row. I love you, motherfuckers. <laughs> Charles, you have a great energy, oh, real great man. stage presence. How long you been doing stand up again? Man, about ten, about twelve years. Twelve years, I love it. All of it here in Austin. Where are you from? Yeah, Austin, Texas, baby. Born and raised. Born and raised. Wow. Hold up, huh? 
McCallum that. High School in this month. I'm calling out high schools, uh, elementaries, all that I shit. I love it. That's Tell me. us some fun things. There's something we haven't done because we've almost never, by the way, this is one of the only cities we've ever been to where we almost never meet anybody from this city. <laughs> Uh, tell us some fun things about Austin that we need to try out. You seem like you have a lot of, uh, what's the uh, word, uh, soul? Oscar I nominated. Say. And I tell, say, us, uh, tell us some cool things that we have to try out. I bet he can tell us where the white women are. I can definitely oh, tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Huh? No, it's uh, true. Guadalupe, right across the campus. Yes. Yeah. All what, the are, what are some of your favorite stuff. places or things in Austin? Man, I don't know the strip clubs. Ah. Really? You go to the Yellow Rose and the Red Rose? I do. They never let me in. Really? Yeah. Well, you know what? We're going to change that. They know I don't have money. They were like, "Uh, no. (laughs) We need to get him in there. Stay in the parking lot, sir. Well, well, fuck they you probably too, don't. Man. They probably think you're the bouncer. That's they why they do. want you outside. Like, you're late. I'm like, I'm already wasted. What are you talking? <laughs> I'm late. <laughs> I'm ready to drink it. What else, Charles? What else do you love about Austin? Any restaurants Ooh, or anything wait. like that? Let me see. Um, not really. They all just. Pre- oh, Jamaican Tony. God damn. Jamaican a, Tony. Jamaican Tony on 11th Street, man. Wow, Ooh, it's wait. called Jamaican hey, Curry. Tony. Is, is, hey, I'll tell you, Curry. You get fucked up. I'm telling you, one plate, you sleep. Oh, shit. The man yeah. knows about Jamaican They got them Tony. oxtails out there. You know what I'm saying? Cholesterol just through the level. Yeah, you know, yeah. It opens my eyes. Say, say <laughs> damn. What? <laughs> That's cold bloody right there. Hell yeah. <laughs> he crazy. Damn, I, I would try crazy. that place, man. Absolutely. Yeah, Jamaican Tony's. They go hard. And uh, Cajun Eats. Woo-wee. Cajun Eats? What do you get Tell there? Me. Like bags of seafood? Shit. Hell no. Chicken and mac and cheese, baby. Oh, shit. Ooh, it's seafood mac and cheese. Oh, oh shit. Oh, my God. I'm talking about one bite. I'm talking about, oh, oh, oh. I ain't sharing this shit with nobody. The fucking food here. Whew, is I'm ridiculous. getting horny, man. I love food. Crazy. <laughs> it's so funny. Every day, we, it was, and, and even like I was saying, like we stumbled into Chez Z the other day. Am I saying that right? Chez Z. It's oh. French. C H E Z. Z E E. I sound like some white people shit. What right? the fuck is that? Some chez chez why? Yeah, exactly. And uh, you know, and then you end up going there, and then you and then you, you find that place, and then you get find out you're recommended three other places. So the list never gets shorter. It's such a fucking. Cool That's why thing. everybody's big in Texas, baby. All we do is eat. That's okay? right. I know, right. I know, but eat the weird thing... The you weird, gotta eat everywhere. The weird thing is uh, that we go to Houston and Dallas yeah. three or four times a year. Yes. There's nothing like Austin, Texas food. I'm telling There's you. Something and the food it. trailers? Oh, my God. We go everywhere. We uh, travel the entire world. There's not a fucking city like this. It speaks for, for itself. <laughs> You're in pretty good Thick-ums. shape. How do you stay in shape, Charles? How do you, not, how do you stay away Shit. from looking like David Lucas? Chase it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucked up, man. He's, he's cool, man. He is he is he is fat, but uh yeah. no, I just chase kids. Uh, he he got hands though. <laughs> you be careful. You be I careful. put you on my show no more. I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. You be careful. Luck, luckily, the, luckily, there's, there's someone brought a cake here, so he's busy right now. <laughs> oh, that's fucked up too. Oh, he's one slice away from diabetes. How do you stay? How do you stay in uh, uh, decent shape? Man, at work chasing them motherfuckers. I, I work in a junior high school. You know what I mean? Okay. Chasing them kids around and shit. You know? Yeah. I'm like, you over there, fucking get your ass back in class. You, you seem know? like you would yeah. be the coolest yeah. fucking middle yeah. school teacher yeah. I could possibly imagine. Am yeah. I right? What I got you... teach you the year my first year, man. Well, wow. you're for real. Wow. After that, I said, fuck this shit. I just stopped going to school. Yeah. You're definitely one that connects with the kids, right? Like, Because you're a gamer. I, I can them, tell no. you're a gamer by your shirt and stuff oh, like yeah, that. Oh, yeah, baby. I get a pin there. You know, yeah. Connect with the children. <laughs> Not in a like Jerry Sandusky kind of way, but like a... Ooh. Okie dokie. Uh, That's cold blood, man. Why are you Charles, doing? what else? What did we not find out about you last time you were on this show? What's another thing that you do or that you're into? Oh. Or I didn't tell you. Uh, so I used to work, still work at this venue called Mohawk. Oh, uh, that's right. Okay. Live at the Red River. You know what I mean? Hopefully open it up back soon. What's uh, Mohawk? It's a uh, music venue. You know what I mean? It's Caddy Corner of Stubbs. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And I used to work, uh, you know what I'm saying, the band and all that shit, loading and unloading. 
you know, kicking people out and all that type of shit. Hell Real yeah. Fun. Very yeah. cool. Service industries. Yeah, man. I love it. I so, love that. That's Mohawk. easy money right there. You know what I mean? You can listen to all the crazy music and shit. I don't know what the fuck they talking about, but oh, I'm yeah. getting paid. <laughs> Look at that. 4.6 rating. <laughs> very, very hard to yeah. maintain a 4.6 yeah. in a city where people get drunk and you have to kick them out sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That really, fuck that it, it ain't me. Yeah. 4.6 is basically a 5.5. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Mohawk <laughs> Austin. Very yeah, man. cool. What's your favorite show that you've seen there? Oh my God! Let me see. We had Wu Tang, the Ghetto Boys. Whoa. Ghetto Boys? Oh Fuck yeah. man, man, what? Hell yeah! Bushwick Bill, all them motherfuckers. Yeah, nice. Uh, we had the Baby. Oh, oh shit! Oh, I, I didn't know who he was. <laughs> I'm behind the stage, setting up the stage, and he was like, "Oh, the Baby's here." I said, "Where is he at?" Oh fuck, he really that tall? Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, that's short. <laughs> Well, he was cool. They had all these guns and shit. It's like, you're real thug. Yeah. Austin gets yeah. a bunch of great artists. I uh, I headlined a show at Vulcan uh, Gas Company uh, last week on a Saturday yeah. night. And they had a show after that. They had like an 11 p.m. show. And I went, the show had been over. I went back into the green room just to see if like the people that I was there with were in there or whatever. I sort yeah. of got like lost or whatever. And I walked in. There's just one guy sitting there. It's Young Dolph. Memphis, God, Tennessee damn. rapper. Really? Okay. okay. Clearly, nobody knows who I'm talking about. I Charles, fuck, can you yeah. back me up here? You know, I talked Young to Dolph. him the other day. Yeah, he cool. He cool. Oh, people. you did? Yeah, we smoked the square together and everything. Oh, yeah, wow. Cool. Man, yeah. black people are so cool. Yeah, we they like are. each other, dog. We like, hey, we all black when we turn the lights out. Hey, I like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, kind oh, of. Oh, shit. Oh, this, damn. He's drunk. <laughs> he's drunk. I don't even know what he just said. I love that. But I like it anyway. You, you Can you do any more like cool catchphrases like that where the band like pops at the end? Know. You're very good at that. You have any other cool thing? We're all black if you turn the lights out. You have any more like that? I think that's we could just do a can, runner of those right oh, now. Can you, no, say, no, can you say nobody leaves this place without singing the blues? Oh, shit. What the <laughs> fuck are you it's talking about? It's from Adventures about? in Babysitting. Oh, another fat guy in the back knows what you're talking about, Red Band. How about you just do what I asked you to do before Red Band hijacked the momentum? Uh, do, do, do. You want me to sing? Any I cool, can't sing, Any man. cool catchphrases or anything like that? More of those where the band pops at the end? Really, anything works. Look out, bitch! That's about it. <laughs> oh! I was right behind you! Get out the way! Get out the way, motherfucker! Do it again. Do it again. Do another one, Charles. Anything works here. Just do it. Fuck you, Tony! <laughs> All right. Literally the one thing I, I didn't want you to say. Oh, uh, man, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. Do mine. I'm just talking shit now. I don't even know what the do fuck Do another one. Do another one. Nobody oh, say, man, the, say the, black, say the yeah, black or the berry, the sweet or the juice. Just Come say on. Well, well, well. The black or the berry, the sweet or the juice. <laughs> oh, hit me. Stupid. <laughs> oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I love this man. Incredible energy. What I would give to have had you as a middle school teacher. My guys were such assholes. You have a great (laughs) fucking energy about you, man. I I hope you come back. The opposite of what I prescribed, uh, Gareth Fisk. I want you to come back anytime. (laughs) Sign up anytime. Come on. How loud can this place get for the girl Charles Adams? Charles. What's up, baby? Charles, I want you to have... I want you to have the last available of these handmade Kill Tony uh, leather books. Keep working on your stuff, man. Oh, look at that. Everybody loves Charles. I'll even give you a real handshake. You're cool as shit. Nobody leaves this place out singing the blues. Charles Adams, ladies and gentlemen. That's how it's done. All right. You guys think I should pull a woman out of the bucket? All right. Here we go. Aw, Yoni. Yoni, you were so close. David Flores, a legend here on Keltonia, a foot-smelling comedian. Nate g- something. Okay, we know this young lady. She was famously on an episode of Kill Tony in New York City at Skankfest. She just got pulled all the way from Los Angeles, California. We know this crew. Comedy Store famous crew. Make some noise for Emily, everybody. Emily, very, very awesome supporters of live comedy at the Comedy Store almost every night, even throughout the pandemic. Come on, guys, make some noise for Emily. Oh, I can't see any of you. That helps a lot. Okay, cool. So 
I had never been slapped with a more prime example of somebody needing to get their priorities straight than that time my apartment exploded in Florida, right? So I run into my roommate's bedroom, find her sobbing over some $35 handbags from Macy's. I'm like, woman, there is a bonfire in our living room. Can we go? Shit's still got the tags on it. She's bawling her eyes out now. Me, granted, I'm talking like Florida ceiling bonfire, right? I've always wanted a skylight. Never thought that was how the universe was going to answer that question, but hey, beggars can't be choosers, right? So, anyways, me and my pack, I got like a couple chairs, a couple changes of clothes, a couple bottles of water. I grab like a fucking packet of tuna for some reason, and I run back into her room thinking all all the ways I'm about to have to drag this bitch out of our apartment, right? I'm thinking like bridal style, cross the threshold, some curtail of dresses flowing behind us like some fucked up wedding train. Shakes one look at me, one look at the tuna, goes, damn girl, you need to get your priorities straight. Okie dokie, uh, Emily, everybody, shades of Gareth Fisk uh, in the room. There you go. An incredible story with a <laughs> twist ending that did not end in a punchline. Uh, a real misdirect there. A lot of us were expecting a joke, and we learned to expect the unexpected. Brian, you really uh, need to stop touching women on the stage. Um, <laughs> Holtzman having acid flashbacks to a different decade right now where you could touch <laughs> random women. Uh, there you go. It's, a it's, a rock so it's never good when you hold on to the handshake, Holtzman. Uh, it's uh, not really something people do anymore. It's blowing an abnormal amount of kisses, double hand blowing kisses. Uh, it's, uh, Careful right. there, Holtzman. What's she doing there, friend? Well, uh oh. <laughs> looks like she look, looks like she's about to give you a pair of women's panties. <laughs> that have been that would have gotten a bigger wow. laugh if Kaylee wouldn't have given you her panties earlier in the night. Uh, Emily, welcome mm. back to the show. How long you been doing stand up comedy? So I did it for about a year before the pandemic hit, and then that shit happened. So here I am now. Because you've been off for a full at least a full year. Then is what yes, you're saying. Yes. Hold on a second. I think there's a uh, the the full. Mi oh, it's just David Lucas. Everybody. Oh, I thought David it was David an Lucas earthquake. In. Yeah, I, thought I felt that. Was a, uh, I thought I was watching the. <laughs> yeah, that's what we call grazing. Everybody, that's grazing. He's grazing through the room. Um, so Emily, okay, yes, and sir? Uh, but your appearance. I remember your appearance on Skankfest going really I would well. Hope so yeah. Right? Yes, it was. And this was a story, sort of long form here. One of my favorite parts of this set, just to show you, you know, this young lady here in the front has been screaming for me to pull a woman all night. And my favorite thing is during uh, about 40 seconds into Emily's set, Red Band whispered to me, this chick over here is furious. I look at her and she's staring at me like this. <laughs> and, and she goes, this is how women, by the way, if you're wondering how, why we make fun of female comedians sometimes, because they don't support each other. It's a, one of the most hilarious things. And she literally goes, no, not her, me, <laughs> during her set. Instead of paying attention to her set for what could have been a funny moment, so, so I don't. I, I guarantee you're probably just as bad. What Wait, do you mean? Can we, do can I we, disagree? Can we figure that out? Can we see that, Tony? You guys think we should give this girl a chance? All right, Emily, you stay on stage. Stand back here. No, not on Holtzman's lap, Brian. You stand back here. You want a fresh mic, or are you good? You need a fresh mic, or like a real fucking diva? Fully vaccinated. What's your name? What? Deanne Wallace, late. De oh, sure, Leanne Wallace, everybody. Here she comes, already getting kisses blown at her from Brian Holtzman. They're flying around the room. I think Holtzman accidentally hit D Madness with one of the kisses. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here she is. Um, one more time for Leanne Wallace. The clock starts now. Okay, A, I'm Face pro, the audience. I'm pro women. Um, okay, so this whole thing is called like Kill Tony, but I wish it was like f that game of like Fuck Mary Kill. If I could just like fuck Tony, maybe he'd like like me. Um, you've got to, like, fuck people for them to like you, right? I mean, I've done that before. It's not, like, a lasting thing. <laughs> Maybe, like, a day or two. Um, but I've also fucked for, like, Whataburger. That's, that's more fruitful. Like, you know you're getting a burger out of it. I feel like this is, like, a California crowd. You don't know what Whataburger is. It's, like, in and out like, Texas. Um, so, okay. Oh, yikes. Okay. Hot mic. 
Uh, okay, so I feel like the pandemic has disproportionately impacted single people. Has anybody else been like super fucking lonely during the pandemic as a single person? I feel like I spent so much time just like masturbating and looking out the window. <laughs> because like I feel like just like looking out the window like at how life used to be like turns me on. <laughs> like I'm horny. Like remember like when we used to do stuff together? Um, okay, so my low the, the low point of the pandemic for me was okay, so I was visiting my boyfriend and I took an Amtrak. Wait, have you guys ever had like a boyfriend or girlfriend, but they're like not actually your boyfriend or girlfriend? But like you thought they were? So I was on an Amtrak. I don't know if you guys have ever been on an Amtrak. Holy fucking shit, man. This is a real conundrum here. I thought Emily getting silenced throughout her set was bad. Somehow, Leanne was able to get audible boos from the audience halfway through her set. I, ho- I heard booerns. You heard what? Booerns. Boo Burns. Remember, what like, are you the, saying? the Simpsons? Are you Boo making Burns. a Simpsons reference right Boo now? Burns. I have no idea what's happening. Boo uh, okay, so uh, how do you feel like that went? Um, I feel like it went um, better than Daryl. Was that his name? Darryl no, Darryl? you're thinking of Gareth Fisk. I, how could I forget that name? Like, his stance was making me nervous. It was so wide. Like, I know his pants made you nervous. Like, his stance made me nervous. So let me ask you something, Leanne. Sure. Is that how you thought it was going to go? Or I mean, you... I've, I'm not like a... I'm not like I don't have any like, professional Have training. you ever done it before? Uh, no. It's this like, is your first set? You pop my cherry. Very, very good. How about that for courage? Like... When my actual cherry Popped was cherry, popped, wanna... I, I cried halfway through, so I can do that. Popped um, her cherry. If you guys want. Wait, what? I, like, when my actual cherry was popped, I cried. Uh-huh. Like, I could cry this time, too, if you guys want. Let's just see. Let's see what the audience thinks, because this is a real battle of the titans here, and I think we should let the audience decide. A lot of people think I'm a mean guy, so instead of me making any decisions here... I'm going to let the audience decide which <laughs> set. I like women. I want it to be t- like girl versus girl. Oh, like look who's girl. trying to fucking fix her <laughs> reputation right now. This is it. This is Joe Biden two weeks before the election. Like, uh, no, I swear I can talk. Joe Hold on. Holtzman, 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 Holtzman. Okay. Okay. Yes. I see what's happening. This is All right. How many of you have Emily oh, Holtzman? Jesus Christ. <laughs> And how many of you have Leanne? (laughs) Oh, shit. Oh, my God. The guy that's fucking her tried to cover the mouth thing where where he tries to make it seem like the whole audience is going, yeah, at once. Leanne, is this something you think you're going to try again? Um, sure. Yeah, yeah. Is this something you've always wanted to do? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) I feel like it's like, is that... Should I just like do a single teardrop? Just, just cry. What okay, do you what, do? What, what, didn't, what didn't you like about it? What? 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 <laughs> what did we not like about it? Yeah. Is that what, what you what just you asked? Like uh huh. Okay. Well, I, I'm open I, to feedback. I'm like a I'm a coachable. Okay. Uh. Well. You didn't like the idea too of like, much teeth. Too much. Te- <laughs> what does that mean? Okay. That's one of. There's a fully vaxxed table of old people if you don't want teeth. Okay. Oh, you're still trying to don't don't drag don't drag that cute table of old people into this. We support the elderly here at Kill Tony. By the way, for those of you listening, these guys are just like in their fifties. They're not that old at all. Not at all, that old at all. Kaylee, what do you think about these girls? What do you have to say? Wait, who? This chick right here. Wait, there's a third chick? Oh, wow. shit. What the fuck is this? She's got the stunner shades already. I'm just going to take this from you. <laughs> Who is that? What is happening right This girl know. is it's in her pajamas right, right hey, now. Like Holtzman would say, just take it, Tony. This is just what we is have to Angelina do. Angelina to- Jolie? Uh, okay. it's, it's up to you. I, I don't... You What's know? your name? Christine. I had run, I had run down here be- to kiss the guy. You so did? So I was like waiting. Really? Yeah, I was waiting there. What were you, just she- waiting silently? Yoni, I was, I was talking guys, to somebody. Uh, there's no communication when a girl runs down here to kiss Gareth Fisk? To kiss Fisk? a guy, too. Yeah, yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. Somebody gave me the underwear. Okay. What's your name? Christine. Christine. And you've done stand-up comedy before? Yeah. You guys think we should give Christine one minute? All right. 
Here it is for all the redemption of all the female comedians please. in the world. Yeah, please, no. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one minute from Christine, everybody. Make some noise for Christine. This is where you clap to begin the momentum of a one-minute set. Look, I'm, I'm here to defend Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, he's not a monster. <clears throat> Look, the youngest girl was 14. Do you remember wh where, who you were when you were 14, what you were doing? Yeah. I was a slut. A lot of us were sluts at that time, plump and sexy. Listen to me, a 14-year-old is not a child. You cannot trick or treat when you are 14. You are not allowed to trick or treat. You are not a child. Plus, you know, we killed an innocent man. Uh, he had private yachts, a private island, millions of dollars, private planes. Gorgeous man. I don't know if you remember the pictures. If he had hit me up when I was 14, my parents would have driven me to the airport just to meet him. Okay, thank you guys for that time. There it is, 58 seconds. She did not go over her time. A reminder that the other two girls uh, both see. brought out the bear. Uh, extended sets to a minute 13 seconds. There was a it's joke fun. in that last one, Tony. There was. There was. There was. There was a verified yes. joke. We have confirmed with the judges that there was a single joke in that one-minute set. Uh, at no point did you have audible boos. That's very exciting. Um, how many of you think Christine took it here today? There you go. All right, Christine. There. Look at that, ladies supporting ladies. I love it. Emily. You can tell me to get off. I don't know if I'm supposed to be on here. You it's know. It's okay. How long have you been doing stand-up comedy? Two years. Basically. All of it here in Austin, Texas? New York, and I moved down here. When did you move here? Yesterday. Wow, look at that. Jesus, just storming right into the I'm seat. I'm not too liberal. I'll be fine. I'm not going to throw trash, you know. Right. Yeah. Okay, very good. What do you think's happening right now? Can they kiss? A red band, no, that's not how it works. God damn it, red band. Unless you guys want to, in which case the crowd will go wild. All right, just kidding, yeah, okay, just kidding, okay. everybody. I don't know. Like, I'll do anything for views, I guess. Really? I don't know. I, I, haven't, I haven't had the chance yet. You know, I've been a loser for so Wait long. Wait a second. What does Emily think about this? We could have a three-way kiss right now. Is that good? Three-way with, with Holtzman? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Look, we're not going to do this. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not. You know, I haven't had the opportunity, so I don't know what is supposed to fly, you know? Look at the We've created a ruckus here at Anton's right Hey, now. you can hang out in the green room at Vulcan Thursday if you want to. Oh, red band. <laughs> red band. You're out of control. I love it. It takes a lot of courage to get up here. Emily, thank you so much so for strong. signing up. Christine, thank you so much for storming the stage and coming up here. Give, 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 Emily, give Emily the underwear. She took it like a champ up here. Emily, what, what a, wasn't there something else fun about you? What was it? that you, Like you wrestle or something like that? I mean, like I might have part-time for a little bit, yeah. Didn't you once body slam someone on this show? I did indeed. You oh, did, right? right. Yeah, that, who right. was that, Jeremiah? It was. Oh, yeah. my goodness. I'm I pretty sure that, that dude's still probably walking kind of funny, but yeah. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Wow. I wonder if there's, any other, if there's any other fragile people here that you could easily body slam. I don't know. I don't see them. Oh. Everybody's like, no, really? Kaylee, sit your ass down. <laughs> Damn Jesus it. Christ. Uh. Right. Kaylee brought to you by cocaine tonight. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Ow, ow. Out of control. It's, it's so early in the day. It is 9.30 at night right now, and Kaylee's been zipping for two hours all around the place. Uh, Emily, thank you so much for coming on. Welcome to Austin, Texas. There thank she goes, you, Emily, everybody. She's on social media at M-L-E, spelled like M-L-I, zero one. E-M-M-A-L-I-E, zero one. All right, you guys ready to close this fucking show out with a bang, huh? Austin, Texas, this young man ruled the roost in Chicago, Illinois, at the very famous Second City, an improv guru, ladies and gentlemen. This guy, uh, diagnosed with ALS a couple years ago, decided to knock it off his bucket list and do what he always actually wanted to do. Instead of being in an improv group, he wanted to be a stand-up comedian. 
Once diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease, he decided to chase it. We found him immediately and immediately made him a regular. He writes and performs a brand new minute every single episode. He fully recovered from his uh, March cocaine bender. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the new and improved Michael Lair, everybody! Sup? Stop telling me how cool my wheelchair is. That's like saying you look sexy on dialysis. Or your skin glows while you're on chemo. This is not a wheelchair. It's a bird scooter for the damned. You try plugging your legs in. You just try plugging your legs in every 12 hours. I go to restaurants. I demand a discount for bringing my own chair. <laughs> strip clubs, strip clubs give me a discount on lap dances, but they charge me a maintenance fee for jizzing all over the place. My cock is like a fire extinguisher. The National Guard using my cock to put out forest fires. Smokey the Bear gave my cock the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Wow. Michael Lair. Absolutely incredible. I almost forgot what punchlines were like after uh, the three female comedians were up here uh, back to back to back. That was like, you did, you did so many, there were so many jokes there. That was like having 71 female comedians on stage at once. Oh, you're being generous. That was incredible. My goodness, just joke after joke after joke after joke with actual uh, audible, very, very funny punchlines. Well, God. I have a lot of free time. <laughs> So do they. I promise you, so yeah. do they. That's, that's not an excuse. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Welcome, Michael. I've been having a great day, ruined now by fucking Chester the, p- the Pussy Molester <laughs> over here. Holtzman and Michael Lair have a very interesting rivalry. These two hate each other for some reason. Fucking Pederas. <laughs> Dude. His mustache smelled like little boy butt. <laughs> oh my I, God. I will beat your ass. <laughs> Dude, shouldn't he be selling a used car somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, uh, handicapped vans, I guess, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking lizard skin over here. <laughs> Fucking Holtzman has a record for most drunk cleaning done to close board at Goodwill. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Michael Lair absolutely up here shredding, wearing a, a new tiger outfit. Look yeah. at this. Get up. I mean, you are just a fucking rock star, yeah. dude. Oh, yeah. well, you gave me the platform. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got it on Amazon. <laughs> Not the website, in the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> that explains all the tigers. I get it. Love it. Fucking, oh, for the first time ever since I've been on Kill Tony, I like you, Tony, more than Red Man. Oh, really? Why? What happened? Well, Red Man fucking bumped me from his show last week. Oh, you bumped him off the secret show. It takes that very seriously. Uh, <laughs> okay, you know what? Okay. So uh, we had 12, uh, 18 comics on the last show, and you know yeah. sometimes it's like, hey man, I got too many people on this show. The yeah, question: so, I mean, Michael Lair has been on every. Uh, you've been on show. every episode, or every show since then. Yeah, I'm by so. Well, I guess you don't want to be on this week, motherfucker. Okay, okay. red red band is. Um, um but any time. of those other comics. Does it take them three and a half hours to get dressed? Oh, good question. He did. He's 
Uh, Red Band seems genuinely mad. Mind you, he is for Jack Daniels in right now. I don't think he's taking these like jokes at all. <laughs> no, I mean, look, Michael, uh, I try to give everyone as many spots as possible. Sometimes I don't have, he's, he's like, I, I, I overbook it, all right? So you got to be like, hey, I, I thank you for giving me 14 spots since I've been here. I can take a week off. You don't have to be a little bitch about it. Oh. Uh, Fair, fair. Yeah, I agree with Red Band. Uh, <laughs> Michael, what are you? You're like the fucking swamp thing. You are Red Band. Fair. <laughs> oh. Red Band playing the sounds of Michael's wheelchair. This is getting personal no, right you, now. You don't want to be getting on an airplane when this fucking guy is on the same flight. Yeah. And why they phoned me up and put me in the overhead of compartment. Michael fucking Lair. What a force. What a force. Yeah, man. That was a good one today. Yeah, it was. Today felt like a hearty meal. Yeah. Absolutely. A lot of highlights. I mean, who could forget the guy asking for one of the coolest jobs ever imagined? Just basically because he did a few fundraiser bartending gigs, which anybody that's ever bartended knows that is the absolute entry, entry, entry level of bartending. Right. Fundraising usually gives you like uh, maybe two, maybe a red wine and a white wine to pour in a fucking glass. Uh, and uh, it's so true, famously Tony. cans of beer. Like it's like it's either beer or wine. There's no real mixing of alcohols or anything yeah, like 100%. that. Really, but like he swears up and down, according to him, dozens of fundraisers, which could be up to two dozen fundraisers. That's 24 for those of you that... All right, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah. Matthew McConaughey is like, you know what? This is a great beer. You did a great job, bartender. You deserve whatever bartending job your wildest dreams can fucking... <laughs> I love it. And then, of course, we had a triple threat female comedian uh, face-off where we... That was awesome. It Maybe really we could was. do that like every week, just have three females Maybe like, go off. not. <laughs> wow, the red band, the king of bad ideas, ladies and gentlemen. It's incredible. Really, and if you want bad ideas, uh, email redband at redband.com. Uh Michael Lair, I mean, you are just a fucking... The word cherry has been used a lot tonight, and I'll use it again. You are the cherry on top of a fucking very fun episode of Kill Tony. You know how to bring this thing home better than anybody. How loud can this place get for the great Michael Lair? MichaelLairComedy.com for everything Michael Lair. And we did it again. This is another banger of a Kill Tony episode. Let's check in with the drawing from Ryan J. E belt. Holtzman, look at this mamma jamma. Ooh, look at that. Get in a little bit closer there. Holtzman has a shotgun. Oh my god, this is incredible, the detail. I'm in a coffin with a bandana. This is so cool. And red band. Very cowboy, very western Texas edition of a Ryan J. E belt drawing. Guys, how about a hand for Brian Holtzman, everybody, our guest tonight. The Dead Air Podcast on the Death Squad Comedy Network. Everything Michael Lair at michaellaircomedy.com. How about the band tonight? D Madness on the bass. Uh, he is the absolute man on electric guitar, Matt Muling, ladies and gentlemen. He's at Mutation on social media. D Madness is at Lorenzo Dwayne Jackson. And guys, the man on the drums, the fucking Mexican, Michael Gonzalez, Mike A. Guns 13 on social media. John Dees will be back next week, uh, of course. He's at uh, John Keys on social media. That's the official Fix Vodka yes. Kill Tony band. Fix is so great, man. We I love, love Fix Vodka. I had a screwdriver this morning to get my day started. Before I went to the gym, I had a delicious screwdriver. Uh, that alkaline vodka gives me energy like you'd never believe. I just sit there like Samuel L. Jackson and Jackie Brown, slow sipping on that mm-hmm. mamma jamma. Great way to start uh. the day. Uh, again, Brian Holtzman has the Dead Air podcast. RyanJEBelt.com for all the prints available. 
Check out the one-year anniversary of the Red Rose. It's this Thursday featuring yeah. a couple of your favorite porn stars. How about one more hand for the wild and lovely Kaylee? <laughs> she just did a line of cocaine off the bottom of her shoe, for those of you just listening to the podcast. Uh, it's a wild time out here in Austin, Texas, Red Band, right? Hey, Tony, not only do me and Brian Holtzman do a podcast together called Dead Air, and we had Kaylee on the latest episode, but we have a show every week at Vulcan called the Death Squad Secret Show with a lot of these people on there. Please check that out. Go to DeathSquad.tv for tickets. Thanks. Live audience, we did it again. We love you, Austin, Texas. Feels like home to me. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you.
Bye.